budget. Budget. Uh, uh, it's so difficult when you do a budget because you know I've got a very, very detailed spreadsheet, very detailed that I worked up with my QS. He gave me the bones of it, and then I've spent nights and nights and nights working through costs. And the problem is that you you put those costs into certain categories and you don't get invoiced that way. So you can't ever really know until you Where get to the at. end of stages. And I'm mm. sure you know this in your mm. experience. You know, you think you're about right, but you don't know until you get to the end of the stage. I thought we were a little over. I managed to sit down because we're at the point where I could do it. And we were, I think we're about five grand under without spending any contingency, which I'm sure it's wrong, but I... Certainly wouldn't make good television, would it? A project that's on time, on budget, Charlie, I wouldn't expect anything no, less from all, you. No, all, all the figures seem to say that we are about five grand under at the moment. I'll be asking you that question on my next visit and yeah, see if yeah, that's yeah, still yeah, the yeah, same yeah. story. No, I, yeah, and, and I would be amazed if it is, but I'm working... Re- I, look, we're managing to keep roughly on, t- on time and on budget because I am working my socks off to do that. As you know, any self-builder yeah, who's yeah. running their own project. Yeah. Is doing. I've always had so much respect for anyone who self builds their homes. I mean, increasingly, it's almost like the house is secondary to the fact you've just achieved it. I mean, oh my God, it is so difficult. And I know, I've done it, I know how hard it is, but I've never lived on site doing it. Uh, and that is another level of, of, of difficult. And you know, I go to building sites all day, every day for, for my work and you know, for the practice and for filming, but it's, it's, it is hard. Charlie, it's very rare that anybody would be under budget at this stage in a project. Do you want to give some tips as to how you've achieved that and, and how you've managed to run such an efficient ship? Well, I, I think the first thing is we had a very detailed, professionally sort of, I had a lot of professional help to get the cost plan in place. Right? So it was accurate the first to thing. start with? Really accurate to start with. Most of the time, when, when I follow builds, um, their cost plan, they sort of worked it out themselves and they missed loads of stuff. Uh, you know, they do. Now, when I first got the cost plan back, I looked at loads of figures, I went, that's not going to cost that much. Like, you know what, I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to leave that in because I can drop that and I'm sure enough, it's going to come bite me in the bum. And, and that, so I've kept a lot of things in that I didn't think were necessary. Because I have a detailed cost plan, I'm managing, I know what my targets are for all the individual elements. So I can really, I know what I have to try and get it for. So that gives me a target on everything. If something goes slightly over, I need to try and get the next thing. So you're using that as a, the QS report as a benchmark guide for what value yes. should be. And yes. so you know if somebody's yes. subcontractor comes in or a material supplier comes in over that, you say, my QS says this is the benchmark. Yep. And you, you, you push until you get somewhere close to that. The way that I'm managing my subcontractors is that they are all on day rates. Now, there's a risk in that, that if something goes wrong and they're standing around, you're paying for it. But I am not paying the subcontractor an extra chunk to cover that eventuality, which is what you do if you get a fixed price. Yeah. So You're also I am, not paying a contractor to manage them, which no, means you are managing them. I am You're managing everybody. Them. Yeah. I mean, I am managing... You know, they, they might go and pick up a few bits and pieces, but most of the time I will get the stuff onto site and I will be paying directly. So they're not paying, they're just ordering it, putting it onto my account and we're paying that. That really helps. It also but there's means you risk, have to be here, right? But it means I have to spend a lot of time doing it. And just simple things like when you buy block, if you buy, if you buy a, 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 a lorry, you know, a, a lorry, a just truck, what do they call it, truck and drag, you know, yeah. like 22 pallets of blocks, mm-hmm. you, you get them a lot a lot cheaper, you know, 500 quid, you say straight immediately, from the factory. straight from the factory, a whole, and then I've got, a di- for example, I've got a deal with my neighbour who's a farmer, I pay him 35 quid an hour, and he moves all my stuff around on site after work, but I'm out here at 8 o'clock at night, telling him where the blocks to go are, because it's cheaper than having a telefoot handler on site, so it's, it's those little things that you need to, to really keep an eye on, and that is what a contractor would do for you, that's why you pay sort of 20% contractors overheads, and then, if you don't have a contractor, then you need a project manager. And I think it's very hard to, to, you can't underestimate how much value they will give you and how much saving a good one will give you, but they cost. They so cost. A lot, a lot. It all costs a lot. How many hours a day are you putting into this project? Four or five. Four or five, least. weekends included. Oh yeah, or no, weekend, weekends. weekends is like eight hours. Yeah. So you're inside. committing a huge amount of time to save 15, 20% contractor's markup? Yeah. So worth plus, every penny. Plus. plus. Because I'm driving every, everything. Like, you know, trying to find some pipe fittings. I'll go to five websites. And the other thing to do is, so a classic example is the steel works coming today. Um, I had the steel work drawings from the structural engineer. I sent them out to the local guys that I normally use. Their prices came back. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to send it out to five guys. Birmingham's not far away. I'll just send, I've, I don't know who they are. I'll just send it out to three guys in Birmingham and see what happens. I've got three grand off. Just like that, you know, just, just, and then, but it's three bands, then it's plus fat. 
you know, and then you know, so suddenly actually it's a it's a lot of money. It's it's kind of nearly four grand, especially off. for you because in this project right now the VAT is yeah, it's, I'm paying VAT. You're paying the VAT, so everything's plus twenty percent. So every penny you save is actually one pound twenty. So it really makes a big difference, you know. So just stuff like that, everything, question every price, but it takes time. It doesn't look like there's been a lot of muck away here. No, I mean, there's debris left. There's all the stone there from yeah. the demolition of the original building. That's all been hand sorted. That's got real value. Either I'll use it here on some of the stone walls or I'll sell it and swap it for new stone. That's got real value. All my polystyrene I've collected together for recycling over there. I've got all of the other stuff sort of sorted for reuse. So, yeah, really careful um, reduction of waste helps. Um, this soil, both, both the environment and cost, and because it's environment not cheap. first, but you know, cost, you know, because it takes time. But yeah, environment crucially. Um, this soil will then be re-leveled, all the landscape, and this will go back behind the building. So none of this should go away. Again, you know, this, this, this th is thousands 20, of pounds. Well, worth, yeah, yeah. fifteen, twenty thousand pounds worth of soil away here, yeah. which we're just not doing because we knew. It was lucky gonna... you've got a big site and are able to store it on Absolutely. site. I think you'd be crazy to try and that. dig that much soil out if you can't get rid of it on site. I mean, it would just be a very expensive project. So. You know, uh, trying to bring all of that experience to bear is, is, is really where, how we're managing to just about keep the target. Yeah. So a bit of a tip that I've learned the hard way is about sheet piling. Now, sheet piling is really important. What it is, is uh, as you can see, it's like steel crenellated folded sheets that you hammer into the ground. They go into the ground about sort of five, six hundred mil. They interlock and the idea is that they protect any fall of debris from that wall onto people working behind it. So it's, it's no question you need to have it. It's absolutely crucial for the site safety. What I didn't realize, or at the time when I you know, found out that they were two pounds a week per sheet, I was like, well, that's okay. But suddenly then there's 40 of them. So that's sort of 90, just over 40, so that's sort of 90 odd quid a week on that. And I think you can buy them for about 50 quid each. Uh, and then you can sell them obviously. So before you hire them, really do the math to see if it's worth buying them because I should have bought them and then sold them at the end. Um, and as it is, I'm just sort of, it's a necessary evil, but it's just slightly galling that I, every week that's sort of 90, 100 quid just, just going. So don't do that. Be smarter than I was. <laughs>